Up next on episode 21 of LSQ, an excerpt from a 2004 interview with Gwen Stefani. I met up with her in Vegas when she was there performing on the Billboard Music Awards around the same time as she released her awesome debut solo album, Love Angel Music Baby. And where this excerpt begins is with Gwen talking about the song Rich Girl featuring Eve and how the song samples a bit of music from Fiddler on the Roof. figured it out I was like okay just say everything that's true <laughs> you know all the things that cause, because it is crazy like my life how I did get like to be um, have money like I never had money right. you know what I mean like yeah. I, I went on the Tragic Kingdom tour two years later I was like okay no you know I didn't have anything except for my makeup box and my like right. old raggedy tour clothes and um, I lived at my parents still you know what I mean so okay I, I, I just started thinking of things that are true in my life and then um Clearly, the whole message of Fiddle on the Roof is that if you don't have love, you don't have anything. You know, right. so that was what I was trying to put in there as a kind of to balance it out. And still, it's so funny because I read around, read around kids like on the, the website or whatever. They'd be like, "How come Gwen just talks about how rich she is?" And it's like I don't get it. Like I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> or like they think the song Luxurious is about um, literal, but it's about being rich in love. So it's like. Um, you know, it's funny, but but I mean, it, that's the last point. I mean, isn't mo- aren't you playing a character on most of the record anyway? I think the whole the whole record was in the, if there's any moments on the record that are um, serious, that was not intended. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was supposed to be. I'm not. This record is inspired by songs like you know, <laughs> rumors by you know. You know, Club Nouveau and Lisa Lisa the Cult Jam and like, you know, Prince and the Time and, the, you know, these are the kind of, this is where I'm getting Madonna, like, you know, right. the groove. This right. is my inspiration, okay? Right. So, for me, it was like, the, the challenge was to try to write a song um, about getting up and dancing on the dance floor. And that was really hard. That ended up being, for me to go and like, be in a bad fucking PMS mood and write a song is that's not like that's not a challenge. Right. I mean, that's that's like a release. Yeah. You know what I mean, for me to go and try to figure out the millionth way to say let's party tonight and have a good time and put that smile on, on yeah. everyone, everyone's face when they want to get out there and party, that's a hard thing to do. It really is. And I I feel in some way that kind of failed because um, if you look at some of the songs, there's, there's like there's some real songs on the record, you know, that actually have meaning to them. And then like every time I would try to write those other ones, um, they were just. I guess I'm so used to hearing myself say something um, that it just. I don't know. And even maybe the people I would play them for, they they wouldn't be affected by the ones that were just like, you know, I had this one song called. I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> See. It's just about dancing. I don't even remember the name of it. <laughs> it didn't make the record. There was another one I did with Dallas that called, called Boom that was like, turn the boom up. You know, it was all about dancing and, like, going out partying and tonight's the night. And it was, it's really, like, silly. It's the first time that I collaborated writing lyrics on this whole session. Right. And it was fun. I was like, finally I let, like, finally I let someone into my world, you know, because so it was very threatening, you know, because that's what I fucking define myself as is, like, the one thing that I found in my life that makes me be right worthy or like be and someone, then you know? no one can come in and like be like criticize it. Yeah. You know, if you let someone collaborate with you then they would be like, Well that doesn't really work and you're like, Fuck you it's I couldn't imagine if they said that, I would be like <laughs> I would be like I didn't have, it was more about just like, just letting someone to even collaborate or um, suggest something and then my ego being able to take it if it was good. Do you know what I mean? That right. was what the hard part was. Right. I mean that was like it was so hard, and, like, even t- t- today, like, right now, like, that's why the piano's in the room, like, I'm, you know, like, it's, I'm still totally, um, not good with it, like, I'm still like, oh, my God, you made up that part, and I didn't, <laughs> it's really good, and, like, that's why I can't call the record a solo record, because when I sit down and I write the songs all by myself, and I write the record that's me solo, then I'll tell you, but this is really clearly a collaboration album of, you know, working with a bunch of really talented people that I basically had to really fucking keep up with, you know, and, I mean, they tested me, like, they intimidated me, but we're talking about the nicest, most, like, welcoming, arms open, like, you know, bowing down nice, you know, to me, but right. for me in my own life world coming into them, it was like, fuck, you know, sitting next to Andre going, okay, fucking, oh, 
I'm not going to make up something right now. You know? <laughs> like, really? You must have that feeling when you just listen to other people's records, too, where, like, that feeling where you're like, I wish I wrote that. Every day. I was listening to, um, I think I listened, I was listening to a bunch of shit on the iPod on the way over here, like, um, The Sweetest Thing by um, U2, and God, U2 alone, like, the amount of beautiful, amazing songs yeah. that they've written, you know. And then, you know, sometimes I'll write a song that I can't believe I wrote, and the reason why is because I don't remember even doing it. Like, certain songs that really make, really have, like, I'll be really proud of a song like Simple Kind of Life or, like, um, Don't Speak or, you, you know, Don't Speak is a song that was so just it came out of my heart. Like, that record was so innocent because it was, nobody was ever going to hear it. Right, it's we not the pressure of... There was just like, we were never going to get, our record was three years, you know what I mean? We were like a throwaway band. So, um, it's just weird. It's just weird, the whole process, and then working with all these new people was like, it was so hard. It's still hard, like, it's still hard for me to accept. Do you feel like it's, do you, the way you talk about it sounds like you don't, you don't feel like it's actually done. It's like, it's still, it's still Well, because what, what it is, it's so different from... Working with your best friends that you've known your entire, like, half of my life, you know, since I was 17, I'm 35. Um, I sat with those guys, and I, I, like, you know, I wrote songs with them, which is, even in front of them, like, I can remember the rock steady going, okay, you guys go out while I think of something, you know, let me, like, because you have to, like, for me, when I write, I have a track or I have a guitar, whatever it is, and I just, you just riff, you know what I mean? You just let loose, and it's so embarrassing. I mean, it's so funny to go in with people that you don't know and see them do it in front of you, too. Like, you know, like certain writers that I worked with, and like, oh, yeah, that's how they do it. Like, it's really embarrassing, you know? <laughs> or other people that are just fucking so talented, like Pharrell, that just, like, songs just pour, like, come out of their mouth, like, just done. It's just amazing, like, amazing, uh. amazing, amazing. But, um, yeah, it was just so different to go in with all these other people and then complete it and then to go off and talk about it. And, like, usually I'm sitting next to the people that were there doing it with me, but right. this time it's like I have all these different people to talk about and remember the stories, and there was ton there was tons of really magical moments, and, like, it was almost like just like in the What You Waiting For video where the song writes itself, like, the whole record, every song has an incredible story to go along with how it was written, and, like, you know, because when songs are born, it's, like, it's pretty magical. Whether you're writing them on your own or you're writing them with somebody else, it's like, that happened, you know?